Hello family and welcome to another edition of Dana Lynette. I am Dana Lynette and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to share for my eight and a half month update. I'm going to share um, 10 things that I have learned during my eight and a half months as a DIY micro locker two strand twist. And I'm going to uh, maybe ramble a little bit after that about things that I still haven't figured out and maybe you can help me out in the comments. All right, so I've got a little handy dandy list um, so that I would, wouldn't be like completely rambling. There's a guy mowing back there, but I don't think the mic is gonna pick that up. All right, so what have I learned? Um, first, let me just update you and say I'm having fun on this journey. I'm having a good time. I do not at all regret my decision to lock my hair. Um, I think it's working for me. It's low maintenance. It's hair freedom. It's great. Um, so we'll come back to that. All right. So first thing I learned. Um, the first thing on my list has to do with shampoos. Uh, I started out using one of the shampoos that was my favorite as a loose natural. It's called Giovanni Direct. I don't have it right now. Um, maybe I'll put a picture in it. Did I run out? I don't remember if I ran out or if I stopped using it. I think I have one in my shower. I'll go and get it and insert a picture here. Okay, so I used to use Giovanni Direct as a loose natural because it was um, very gentle and it had good ingredients, um, no harsh chemicals. Part of the reason that I decided to lock my hair was to kind of get away from all of the um, endocrine disrupting chemicals that are in beauty products. And I just really wanted to kind of minimize. So um, not wearing, you know, the synthetic hair out of China somewhere that smells like harsh chemicals every time you get it. Um, was one thing and then also just in the everyday beauty products that we use here in the States um, I knew that locking my hair meant minimum to no products and so that would help me decrease um, some of those chemicals so anyway um, Giovanni had good ingredients and that's why I liked it but what I noticed with locks at least I think this is what I noticed and I didn't just completely make this up but um, it was too gentle it, when I washed my hair I felt like I could still smell my hair like the day of the wash you know even after washing it um i felt like that dirty hair smell never really went away so i tried um shea moisture again shea moisture also has good ingredients and it was also one of my favorites their um jamaican black castor oil uh, line that shampoo was also one of my favorites and it's really good again good good ingredients so um i tried shea moisture again and i found that my hair seemed a lot cleaner than when I used Giovanni. So I think Giovanni, which is a great shampoo if you're a loose natural, by all means go for it, especially if you have young children and you're looking for something gentle. But um, yeah, I guess with locks being, you know, the hair being out, you just need something not so gentle. Um, now Giovanni is not, um, it's not a clarifying shampoo, but I'm sorry, the Shea Moisture is not a clarifying shampoo, but it's just a stronger, uh, than what I was using so that's one thing if you feel like you have that um, situation where you can smell your hair try switching up your shampoo um, I do uh, shampoo my hair once weekly that's fine and I think that's on my list so we'll keep it moving number two your hair will swell um, if you go back and I'll link it below if you go back and look at my uh, installation video like my micro lock reveal video um, and you see how small those twists were I stretched my hair um, I have type 4 hair type um, 4b a little patch of 4a in the front but it's it, the vast majority of my head is 4b it's coarse super tightly coiled and shrinkage is real so the length of my hair when blown out was I think sitting right at my shoulders some transparent ends maybe a little past my shoulders but um when it when it when i just wash it and it's completely wet and shrunken you know it would be up to my ears and so i don't know that might be a good four inches um difference when you stretch my hair from the shrinkage so i blew my hair out because i figured it would be more manageable um 
Installing DIY micro lock, micro locks is no joke. I only installed 239. Um, I added a couple more, so I'm somewhere in the 244 mark. But these people run around here with 400, 500, 600 locks. Like, stretch your hair if it makes it more manageable. Um, so that's why I stretched my hair was uh, just for the ease of the install, and that was fine. But just know, um, for those of you who are thinking of starting or are newly started, you are going, your hair is going to shrink up, okay? It's going to shrink up a lot if you, if you, if your install is on stretched hair. You don't have to stretch it, but again, I did that to make it more manageable. So yes, um, when it shrinks, it will also swell. So here's the thing. I went, I think it was about, you can see in one of my videos, I have a, um, I have a lock journey playlist you can search my playlist for that if you want to look at my all my updates and all that but in one of my videos maybe the four month mark maybe sooner I talked about or maybe it was six months anyway I talked about um, letting my hair shrink and like not braiding it or stretching it in any way because I wanted fullness and saw one of my locks to be um, thicker or to swell more my theory was right but I don't advise it your hair is going to swell anyway over time um, you might be three four months in and think it's not gonna swell anymore maybe it will maybe it won't just won't it just depends on your hair but um, I, I the reason I say I don't encourage just um, like not braiding anything because because braiding in my opinion is one of the one of the tools um, that can help you maintain a level of neatness or kempness. Now I'm not advocating that locks need to be super uber neat, but if you're like me, you know, you're not down with that super frizzy look. I mean, you want a little frizz is fine, but you don't want like outrageousness. And so to keep things as compact as you can during the locking process, I feel that keeping your hair braided, for example, if you sleep in braids or um, at least tie your hair up don't just like wash, braid and band wash and then unbraid and then just like go I feel like the hair is not trained as you know mature established locks and so it's still wanting to do what curly hair does and that's go every which way and so I feel like keeping your hair in braids either um, you know while it's drying after you wash it um, and moisturize it, for those of you who moisturize your locks, um, braid it back up. Uh, then that's going to help the hair, you know, while you're sleeping and just generally throughout the day. And as they're maturing into mature locks and established locks to uh, kind of train it to go where it's supposed to go, like in the lock. Um, I hope that makes sense. And I can elaborate on that maybe in another video. I don't want this to be too long, but... Uh, we're trying to get to 10 and I'm on number three. Oh, that was number three. I actually did two and three together. So two was your hair will swell and three was keep your hair braided. So if I had just held off on just letting everything all hang out, I wouldn't have gone through um, a phase that I think I'm still dealing with where things were really frizzing out of control more than I wanted. But it wasn't really necessary and I can tell that by looking at other people's videos who have hair similar to mine so yeah don't let it all hang out keep your hair braided or if you're not into braiding it you know um, tie it down put it in space buns bantu knots do something to help keep your hair contained and just like you wouldn't just let your your loose natural hair all out and loose and anything goes while you're sleeping or you know right after washing I mean help train your locks by you know keeping them contained in some way uh while it's wet and until it dries and and even really after that you know when you go to bed tie your hair up um all right let me keep it moving number four wash your hair so you'll see in like my third maybe my third or fourth video in my um lock journey playlist I was struggling when I first did my hair whether or not to or when to wash it because I had heard on some people's videos you have to understand when you're watching YouTube videos that that is someone's opinion you know people sometimes assert things as if they're facts and as if they're some sort of authority when it's just their ideas and their opinions 
And my opinion is that uh, you need to wash your hair. And having locks, having starter locks, even if they're one day old, should not pre prevent anyone from washing their hair on a regular schedule. Now, what that schedule is, is up to you. But I was like, should I wait three weeks, a month, six weeks before I wash my hair so that I can give my, my locks? I think I said a fighting chance. That's not necessary. Wash your hair. Like, not washing your hair is nasty. Um, it's dirty. And if you're someone who is has the conviction that people shouldn't wash their hair, listen, don't take offense. But my conviction, in my opinion, is there's no reason to not wash your hair i mean having starter locks just braid and band just like you plan to eventually do anyway it's not you know wash your hair um so yeah i say don't buy into the whole idea that once you get your locks in your starter locks started then you need to wait some great length of time i wash my hair every week i prefer to wash my hair i like it to look clean i like it to smell clean i like it to feel clean um sometimes i'll stretch it out to like 10 days Sometimes um, when I, it's summer now, so when I'm working and pulling weeds and stuff in my yard, um, you know, I sweat in my head. I will wa I wash my hair when that happens. Um, plus, being out in the yard, I get all kind of grass and stuff in my, and dirt in my hair. So I just go in and wash it. So sometimes I wash my hair two and three times in a week, depending on what I'm doing in that week. So I said all that to say I don't think that there's any benefit of not washing hair because you have locks if anything you should wash your hair more when you have locks because hello it's basically matted hair and so you really need to work to keep that clean my opinion if you don't agree keep it moving all right uh number five trust the process slash be patient yes we all hear that but i think I put it on my list of things that I've learned um, since starting my DIY micro lock journey because it's one thing to have a head knowledge of something. There's another another thing to have a revelation or a heart knowledge. Like you're really, it's really revealed to you. Like okay, I get it now. Trusting the process. Um, you know when when you like me when I wanted to get locks, I had thought about it for a while, but then just kind of let it go. And then I come across Alicia Don's um, small traditional lock videos, and then um, what's that girl's name? Uh, my one of my hair crushers. She's a micro. She did DIY micro locks from Tanish Fortson or something like that. Um, her locks are gorgeous. And then, honey, it was just this renewed excitement and inspiration. And based on how beautiful those ladies and their hair. You know, I was just like, yes, I can do that. That's a, a lock situation for me. Locks are beautiful. These women are beautiful. I'm, I'm going to do it. But Tanish has fuller hair than I have. She has longer hair. She's a type 4 natural. Like, I'm a type. I think she's type 4C. I'm 4B. But her hair was like, is longer and fuller and just gorgeous. She has almost twice the number of locks that I have. So, my, you know, while... And uh, what's that other girl I mentioned? Alicia Don, she has small traditional locks, but her hair, she's just gorgeous and she's had her locks for like eight years or so. So they, she's gone from short to long, back to short, and they're growing out again. When I see my inspiration and I'm not there yet, I have to trust the process, you know? Um, yes, I might be limited in some of the styles that I can do. I don't have the length. Um, I have all the fullness I want at this point, but I don't have the length to do a lot of the um, things that I want to do yet, um, I have to trust the process that I'm gonna get there. I'm only eight and a half, wait, one month, yeah, eight, eight and a half months into this journey. Um, it's funny when I look at people's one year, one year progress or one year lock, lock anniversary videos and stuff, I'll be like, okay, but why your hair ain't down your butt? Cause that doesn't happen in a year. It doesn't like the first year is your hair shrinking up and getting established and then growing down a little bit maybe so you might realize some length you'll you'll surely realize fullness but you may or may not realize much noticeable length but it's in that second and third year so you kind of have to trust the process if, if length is one of those things that you're striving for and that's important to you um you know like i said when i first started my twists were really skinny uh and had that plucked chicken look going on but again trust the process be patient um i am eight and a half months in and my hair looks 
nowhere near as thin and sparse as it did, you know, in my first month. Maybe my first couple of months. Even where I was at four months, I'm thicker still. Your hair will swell. Okay. Let's move on. This video is longer than I thought it would be at this point. All right. Two-headed dragons. So, I interlock. I mean, I, I retighten. I do my own maintenance. And so, my first seven months, this is what I use. It's the um, crochet uh, latch hook. I even got this tiny one. It's really skinny. I even got this tiny one from the beauty supply store where I live to do the, um, it was helpful for my edges that would come loose every wash. Because I would forget to tie them up or pin them up um so when i would would do it do my um retightening with this a lot of times i would i would just be tired so i'd be trying to hurry up and i would inadvertently join or marry two locks together um uh, and some people call those two-headed dragons now obviously if you can undo what you did once you realize you pulled one through another one then undo it but you can't always do that. I've had several where I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get the one out that I pulled through or maybe I didn't realize it until later and they started growing together or whatever. So when you have those two-headed dragons, don't feel immediately compelled to do something about it. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I mean like, just keep, let it grow. You know, the Bible talks about wheat and tares growing together until, you know, harvest time and then get rid of the weeds and burn them. So what I've learned is don't get all excited go on with your life so once I got to a point where my hair had swelled and it was challenging to do a retightening on uh, a lock that had a double-headed dragon then I I kind of felt it to see if I felt like I could realistically cut one of the heads off and I found out recently with two of them that I could and so there were two two-headed dragons I'm sorry y'all when I'm outside I'm just I'm not into bugs I'm just not into them so these um, you know this was growing out of one and then this out of, a, of another and I just cut them off um, but I waited until it had grown out to a place where I knew that lock was established and thick and secure enough that once I cut that off I wouldn't be compromising the strand that was left connected to my head it wouldn't be thin or brittle or frail or looking like it's about to break like none of that what else let's get a thumbnail all right uh number seven a lock tool is faster than a latch hook so if you use this, that's fine. By all means, do it. Um, but if you have the right lock tool, the right size and whatnot for your hair, um, then when I got my lock tool, it helped speed up my interlocking process. Number eight, semi-permanent hair dye, a.k.a. a rinse, is okay for locks. I know there's a lot of controversy, a lot of talk about whether to, to dye your hair when you have starter locks. Um, I'm not into a permanent dye. I don't know that I've ever used it, but I have gray in the in the front. I just colored my hair yesterday. You don't have to wait like a year with like crazy color. You can use a semi-permanent or a rinse. You can use a semi-permanent in your hair, um, a rinse. And to me, I haven't noticed any negative changes. It's not as harsh. Um, but I, you know, I use black. And the only time I use conditioner is the day that I color my hair. There's conditioner that comes in the pack. Uh, so I use that just a little bit and I rinse it out and I go on about my business. Um, so I think, and I'm not a loctician, but I think you can use semi-permanent hair color. All right, number nine, oils and leave-ins are fine. It depends on who you're listening to and in, in this sister lock or DIY micro lock or professionally established micro lock world some people will say don't use oil don't use oil don't use oil mm -mm. 
I knew the first time I heard that I wasn't about that life. So I've been using oil uh, since I started. I never, I never stopped using oil. You know, from my loose natural days to being locked. Um, and you know, I'm a type four natural. It, you know, maybe things are different for people with type three, type two, or even straight hair who do locks. Um, but for type four people who have kinky coarse hair, I can tell you, um, I haven't had a problem using oils. I would imagine that my hair would be more dry and brittle and prone to break. I mean, when you have micro locks, you know, depending on how small you make them, I mean, they're holding on by such a small little strand. Those hairs need to be strong and they need to be um, supple or pliable. So if they're dry and brittle, I would imagine you would be losing locks left and right. So I wouldn't take chances with that. I don't have excessive slipping. Um, slippage has never been like a major problem when I have experienced it. I just interlocked, tighten it up, move on. So, um, you know, that's me and my experience. So if your experience is different, then so, so be it. All right, uh, I also use uh, Kinky Curly Knot today, um, leave-in conditioner. Uh, and when I wash my hair, practically every time I wash my hair, I'll wash it, uh, towel dry it, and I'll take a little dab. Kinky Curly goes a long way, and I'll just rub it, you know, through, my, through all of my hair and put some oil on it and put oil on my scalp. Um, works for me. And number 10 on my list, this is not so much something that I've learned as it is something that I want to reinforce to people who I know are on the fence about this. Locks are beautiful and locks are professional. I can hear somebody out there thinking, I want locks, but what if I get married? I'm going to wait until after I have a wedding. I want locks, but I'm in corporate America and locks won't work. I am an attorney. And I have locks. There's the fact of having locks is not unprofessional. Now I can I can look unprofessional in my locks the same as I can look unprofessional in my loose natural hair, the same as I can look unprofessional in a wig or a weave, the same as I can look unprofessional anyone can, you know, whether you're white or have ethnic hair. Um, so I don't think that locks per se are unprofessional. I think it's up to you. To groom yourself to look well groomed um and that's the question i mean you know you wouldn't get up with your loose natural hair and just pop on a headband and run out the door and don't do it with your locks um you know style your hair so this is a um i had a formal semi-formal um dinner party last night and oh i'll insert pictures And so I, I learned this style from, uh, if I can remember her name, then I'll add it in the description bar, a link to her video. But this um, young lady on YouTube who has beautiful micro locks, she um, did this updo with perm rods. She curled a bang, she curled the top, and she did a, um, I don't know if you can see that, but she did a basket weave up the back. And so I did that. I added these two little curly cues on the side. But this to me is perfect for a formal. It could even be wedding. I had this little headband with jewels and it was bedazzled and stuff. I mean, that's, don't feel like you can't relax to your wedding or you can't wear them in corporate America or in the professional world. Locks are appropriate for any setting. It's, it's your hair. It's beautiful. All right, thanks for sticking around. This has been a long video. We are past 20 minutes, but um, eight and a half months in this thing. So I think I'll do a 10 month but in the meantime i have so many other videos that i want to get out so you guys stay tuned if you haven't subscribed subscribe if you didn't hit like on this video hit like it helps a sister out and if you know anyone who is considering um locking their hair to share subscribe like and share <laughs> thanks guys till next time bye bye